everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, in our last build, we went action movie when we built the gas gun from the Green Hornet. And if you missed that build, we'll include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage so you can go and check out Gas Gun or any of the other super cool builds we have there. So now, for this build, we're going to go games. So without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> wow, dig that, man. It's the Chainsword from Warhammer. That's right. Dig that, man. That thing is crazy. Tons of work and tons of details. But easy, you can totally do this. There's a lot to do, and a lot to be careful while you're doing it, and a lot of details you gotta line up, but totally easy, you can totally do this. Look at that thing, man. It has so many little cavities and recesses and overhangs and, and little valleys in there and angled cuts and whew, lots of stuff. It's a puzzle, too one of those builds where you have to layer up a bunch of pieces first before you cut them out, um, but totally, totally easy and fun. Uh, so in this episode, making an EVA foam, Chainsword Part 1, we're going to begin going step by step through the monster process of building this bad boy. And uh, if you want to build your very own Chainsword along with us, we have a template. So we'll also include the link to our storefront in the description below so you can go pick up a template if you want and uh, build your own chainsaw. Uh, so, time for me to shut my pie hole. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, we're gonna start building the body of our chain sword, and this is gonna have a lot of layers on it. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put some support in it so that it's stiff because there's gonna be support running all the way through the blade part and down into the handle. So we have two choices. We could come in here with a wood dowel or a brass rod. So we're gonna dremel out this line. We're gonna submerge the, the dowel and then we're going to put this over the top and we're gonna seal it. All right, so let's get on our dust mask. Let's get our dremel out and we're gonna tear this trench up. That bit got so hot that it was melting foam. Great Scott, that's intense. Holy cow. Now you see again why you gotta wear a dust mask, man. Don't be a dumb dumb. wear a dust mask. All right, look at that. Perfect. We are going to get our area cleaned up and then we're gonna come back and continue. All right, now we're gonna get a little bit down inside the trench here. And now we're gonna get some on the dowel. We don't have to get a lot because it's gonna be sandwiched in there, but we'll just get a little bit on here just to help it. All right, there we go. We're gonna give it a couple minutes to dry. Then we make contact. So we're gonna flush up this bottom side and this side with here. Just like that and just like that. We're just taking our time, we're laying it down, we're not stretching it. We want to make sure we don't stretch our foam. Now when we hold it, it's going to be stiff, very cool, and super easy. All right, now. Okay, now if you notice, all of our other patterns that we're going to be bringing in all have been drawn with this square at the end of it, and the reason is is we're going to cut this piece out. Then after we cut this piece out, we're going to start layering these up and these squares will help us register everything in place. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the bandsaw and we're going to knock this whole piece out over there. All right, now you know the drill. We're going to slide through the bandsaw and we're never going to have our fingers going in the plane of the blade. Our hands are always off to the side as we feed through. All 
Okay, now we can't send it through the bandsaw this way because our stick is sticking out and it won't go through. So we're gonna go just like that. Very nice, and it's stiff. It's got the wood dowel on the inside of it, really nice. Now, the reason we have these squares on our template is now we're gonna start layering up on the sides. And what we're gonna be doing is we're using this square as our guide. Now when we bring this in and we stick it down, we know that's gonna be in the right place. And then we're gonna come in after that with our two millimeter foam and we're gonna lay that down. And we know that that's gonna be lined up in place. Then. I Okay, now we're gonna begin at making the actual teeth on the chainsaw. So we've got this long pattern drawn on a six millimeter piece, and then we've got 38 of these half circles transferred over to four millimeter. So we're gonna, we're gonna pivot right around our circle and come out the other side of the line like that. All right, there we go. And we are going to slide right through. <laughs> that easy. Now we're just. All right, there's 38. Now. All right, that's it. Now just keep going all the way down. And it doesn't. All right, there we go. There's our teeth. Super glue down. This is going to be really easy. Get the back of it wet and we're going to come in and we're going to put this over that circle. Oh. All right. All right. All right. There we go. Check that out. Pretty darn cool. Nice. All right. Now this is why we inset our half circles. Notice here that we did not put our half circles lined up with the edge. We have them overhanging the front circle. And the reason we did that is so when you flip it around and we did the same thing with these circles, we have this cool little recess down in here. So that was it. A little tip off. This is gonna come in right at the tip and it's gonna wrap all the way around and come down to here. We're gonna cut off right there like that. All right. All right, now what we've done is this, is we came in and we made our marks here and here. We're gonna strike a line so that we lay this down right in the center. We don't wanna mess it up. All right. All right, there we go. See that? Now we know right where the center mark is. So we'll All right, there we go. Give it a couple minutes, let it dry. All right, we're anchored down. We're going to come right around to here so we know our Sharpie marks are lined up. Let's... See? <laughs> that is so crazy. Look at that. All right, now we've got our next layer that is a big four millimeter piece. All right, now we're gonna leave our straight edge here in a minute and we're gonna follow the curve. All right, here we go. We're leaving our straight edge just like that. And we're gonna do our curve. There we go. All right, there we go. There's both of them. Cut it. Okay, now we've waited a few minutes. It's dry, both sides are dry. Now, this is kind of thin foam. We do not want to stretch it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we are going to get our corner flush, just like that. Okay, there we go. Now we know we're lined up. We used our square down here on this end. We lined up flush here, here, and here. Now we know we're gonna go right down this top edge up here and we're gonna flush it. Line it up right, carefully line it right up on the edge perfectly. There we go. That is nice. 
See, the key is, that's why we draw these weird shapes on all of our template pieces. We've got something to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. Nice, look at that. We flushed it right along the top. It's nice and smooth. <laughs> Loving it, man. All right, next we've got this pattern on a really thin two millimeter foam. Following our straight edge and now we just peel off. Just like that. Take your time, draw your guideline, do your contact cementing. That's it, super easy. All right, you know the drill. We come in and we line up the corner of our foam. Line it right up flush with the top here. And this is really thin foam, so we definitely don't want to stretch it. We just want to lay it down. That's what we wanted, just that slight little step down detail right there. Pretty cool. Holy cow, is that nice. All right, now we transferred our template over that's going to have the, the small holes in it. And these dots are the lines right there, three lines, here, here, and here. So we're going to come in with our sharpened brass tube. and we. Wow, that poked right through there like nothing. All right, there we go. And now we've got a bunch of little rivets we're going to keep for later on. All right, now we're going to come in with our straight edge and start our exacto right at the edge of one circle and go right through. Come to the other side of the circle and go right through. And then we'll cut it. There we go. Nice. That's what we wanted. Just like that. All right, there we go, nice. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our 18 millimeter, which is three quarters of an inch. And we're... All right, there we go, give it a few minutes. Now we know we didn't distort it at all because we laid it down, we didn't stretch it. Beautiful, all right, see that? Got those nice little recess details on there now. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna lay our template over this and we're just gonna cut this corner off. All right, there we go. Just that corner. All right, there we go. We transferred our template over. Now before we do anything with these, we're gonna cut these two little areas out as well on the bandsaw. Okay, there we go. Let me cut these little notches out. Now we, can, we are going to attach it down just like that. And, all right, but first, before we do that, there's one more detail we have to cut on here. Okay, now what we did is we took our knife and we cut this off at an angle. See that? And we're gonna do the same thing on the other piece. Start sawing and we're gonna go right towards the corner. Just like that. See that? Got that cool angled corner right there. That is nice. All right, right here and right here. All right, so what we're gonna do there is we're gonna make a cut before. Just like that. So we want to cut off of here as we want to cut this piece off of the corner. So. All right, there we go. We use the scroll saw and we cut that little corner out. Now, when we come in and we place this down, we're going to have so many cool little recesses and edges. All right. All right, there we go. 
Give it a few minutes and then BAM! Contact. All right, here we go. Look at that, man. That is chunky foam right there. All right, now we come in after all these layers and we're gonna make our cuts on the bandsaw. So let's go hit it. Wow. <laughs> man, that's a swell cut right there. Look at that. Really cool. All right, here we go. We drew a line here. Now, if you notice along the back side here, we drew an angled cut. We're gonna tip our table on our bandsaw and we're gonna feed this through long ways like this. And we're gonna cut a beveled cut on both of these sides. All right, here we go. We tilted our table. We've got our mark here. Now we're gonna feed this right through on that line. All right, there we go, that's what we wanted. All right, now we're gonna begin doing some of the really easy details that lay on the top edge of this. So we're gonna come in, we made some of our own measurements for these pieces, and we have a three pieces plotted out here on four millimeter foam. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, there we go. See that? That's one side. Now we're going to come in and we're going to get the other side. And we're going to hold it while it bonds. Nice. All right. Right. We're going to get all of our pieces coated just like that. We're going to come down in here. We're going to let these set up and dry. Now this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one because the fit is so snug. We're going to have to stick down one side and kind of stretch it and make sure we're clear. All right, give that a couple minutes and then we'll make contact. All right, we made contact on one side. Now we're gonna stretch this. Squeeze it down. Nice, that's a nice little detail. Perfect. All right. Okay, now we measured out 18 and a half inches long, and this is gonna be on a piece of four millimeter foam. Don't fly by your finger at 100 miles an hour. You don't want to whack your finger off while you're building a chain sword. Okay, there we go. That dots the center mark. All right, there we go. Now we know that when those two marks line up, it's going to be completely in the center. So we know. All right, piece of cake. Give it a couple minutes, and then we make contact. Centered right on the top of our piece. Now I'm down here near the front end, and I'm eyeballing this to make sure that I'm going down centered. All right, now we're gonna put our final piece down right on that white line. Sweet, look at that. It's got a slight little overhang right there on both sides. Three. All right, now what we did is we cut out our eight millimeter piece of foam. We did three regular 90 degree cuts. And then on the front end, we held the knife at an angle and we slid through on a bevel so we could get this beveled edge. And this is gonna be going right up here on the front end like this. So what we did was we flipped it around upside down so we could make our mark. And there's our mark right there. So now we know where we need to contact cement. All right, there we go. Give that a couple minutes and then we make contact.
anchor this side of it right there. Now before we stick the rest of it down, let's roll it over, look at our Sharpie marks, make sure we're lining up right, and we are. Okay, there we go. Now we can come over here and put our pressure on it, just like that. All right, that looks good up there. Really simple piece, but just with that beveled edge on the front, just adds a nice detail. And we've got our ridge all the way down that kind of slightly hangs over the side. And we've got our sort of a collar piece there. All right, now I've got my dust mask on. We've got our Dremel out. We need to do a little bit of a repair. And this is what I mean. We were so concerned with laying everything down flush on the edges that we were not paying attention to the back. Now the back of this is supposed to be flush all the way across and as you can tell it's not. And we can't cut this on the bandsaw. So we're kind of stuck. So what we're going to have to try to do is we're going to have to try to get in here with the Dremel and smooth it out a little bit. All right, there we go. Now we've got this flush right here, where they had the little ridge. That's now flush, and the little ridge we had over here is now flush. Now the inside's got a little bit of a recess, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, we took some thin two millimeter, and look at what we did. We took a piece, we measured it, slides right in there on both sides, and then once we put the handle on, it's going to cover that center area. That is a really nice fix. Really nice. And totally easy. So let's... All right, we got it down. Now we're going to smooth it around so that we have it completely covered everywhere inside that cavity. Now we're going to come in, we're going to slide it in place. All right, look at that. That's a pretty good fix. And then when the handle is covering most of the back of this, you won't see any of this part. This is little end parts that you see, we can clean up with the Dremel. So, tight little fix right there, not bad. All right, here we go, super easy. We're gonna attach these to both sides of the body and these strips are gonna go across the top connecting the two. And we just do that all the way around. Piece of cake. All right, there we go. There's all of our pieces. Now let's slide these out of the way, bring this back in. All right. All right, give it a couple minutes. There. Line this up down the edge. There we go, just like that. All right, nice, look at that. Now we've got these, all these are sticking up on the side and we're gonna lay our pieces in the middle. And it's gonna... Okay, so we've got a small little problem we need to fix and it's really easy, but uh, the width of these center pieces matches here, 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 and here. But over on the other side, this one's okay, this one's a little short, a little short, and a little short. So we're gonna recut these three to match so that they fit perfectly. All right, there we go, perfect. The edges match up here and on this side. So sometimes you, like we've talked about before, even though you've got your templates right, sometimes when you're cutting, foam gives a little bit and you're a hair off in some spots, but just chill out, remeasure, recut. We're ready to stick, but we got to be careful because there's contact cement on the ends of these and on the inside edges here. So we're going to have to come in and be really careful with this. We're gonna... All right, now we're down. Now we got to be careful coming over to this side, do the same thing. We have to put our edges together just like that. All right, there we go. We've got our edges together first so that we know they're perfect. Now all we have to do is lay down the center. And we're gonna come over here, we're gonna get a good seam. 
There, how oh, beautiful. Wow. All right, once again, two good seams on the end, then we stick the middle down. All right, there it was, nice and easy. We took our time, connected the end first to make sure we had a nice tight seam, then attached these seams, then push the middles down. Perfect. All right, now we came in with our circle template, picked out the size circles we wanted, two different sizes, and we marked where we're gonna stick them here and here on both sides. Didn't even realize, whacked myself in the front. Just a flesh wound. All right, there we go, look at that. Beautiful little circle. Just take your time, do the rest of them. Really easy. All right, there you go. Wow, man, we are neck deep in this thing. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, you saw how it's a puzzle, like we talked about earlier. Um, a lot of pieces have to be layered up before you cut them out. But then as you start reaching that point where you're done layering and you start cutting, then it starts to appear as what it's supposed to be. Um, lots and lots of work, but totally doable. Um, that's it. That uh, concludes making an EVA foam chainsword part one. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together, we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.